afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Miam Kono, um, and I'm, um, as I was introduced, the editorial office manager um, of Frontiers. And I'm speaking on behalf of Kumla Makam, who unfortunately could not be here, so she sends her regards. Um, I guess in a nutshell, do I have a pointer? Ah. Um, Frontiers is a community-rooted open access um, scholarly publisher. Um, and we were founded um, about seven years ago now um, at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne in Switzerland. We're still based there. Um, and today we are the fourth um, largest open access publisher around. Before I tell you more um, about our review system, um, the collaborative review, uh, I would like to set the framework um, a bit and give you an overview of the main review methods out there. We quite like to judge them based on article numbers, um, so not so much on the innovation behind them, but how much traction they, they received um, in the past in terms of articles reviewed. Um, so for decades, we only had really one type of peer review in publishing, the very traditional one editor, two or three experts acting as peer reviewers. And they have or ha had have the mandate to cherry pick the best and most impactful papers to be published in journals um, that were traditionally obviously limited um, by their print editions and how many <coughs> papers they could accept. And with this model, about 40 to 50 million articles have been reviewed to date. Um, and while being hugely successful, it has quite a few disadvantages, as we know. It can be quite slow, it can be very biased um, and subjective. And then sort of open science gave rise to new peer review models um, with the introduction of green repositories such as archive, bioarchive. People started posting their articles um, and making them available instantaneously um, without any peer review. Um, so about one million articles have been made available this way in archive, for example. And then the rise of the open access journals within the last 12 years drove serious innovations um, in peer review and the increase in what people nowadays call uh, impact neutral peer review. Um, and here the reviewers have the mandates to check if the research is um, scientifically sound, uh, has no errors, um, and if this is the case, then it can be published. So between Biomed Central, PLUS, um, and Frontiers, um, about 250,000 articles have been reviewed this way, um, leading also to a much faster turnaround um, in manuscript review. And this model is younger than the others, um, but also turning out to be quite successful, and is being adopted by many new journals um, that are being launched um, increasingly. And Frontiers um, has taken this impact-neutral review and has, in addition, placed at its core a true collaboration between the stakeholders involved in publishing, so the editors, the reviewers, and the authors. Um, Frontiers um, publishes more than 48 open access journals, um, and we cover about over 350 specialty areas in science, medicine, and technology. And we're also entering the uh, social sciences and humanities. Our journals are community run, um, which means that um, active scientists and researchers are in charge of taking publishing decisions. Um, and there's so we have over 50,000 researchers on our editorial boards, um, including chief editors, um, associate editors, review editors. And the editors handle um, all the peer review process of the manuscripts um, and make final decisions on acceptance and rejection. As our mission is to publish all sound science, um, we handle high volumes of publications. We have been growing um, since our launch in 2007, which really showcases the demand for our type of publishing options for authors. <coughs> And many of our journals, um, despite actually being quite young, around four years, um, a lot of them, they're already the largest in their respective fields. So for example, Frontiers in Psychology is the largest psychology journal around, and Frontiers in Plant Science um, is the largest open access journal in plant science. And many others are growing quite strongly as well. Our journals are also receiving well above um, average impact factors, um, which is actually a great achievement for us because it really showcases that no matter the size of the journal or the review mandate, journals can find the, the importance in the community that, um, that is represented by the publications. The increase in the number of publications, the advent of big data, 
and large collaborations and consortia and the innovations in web technology have allowed for, and I would like to say even demanded, um, a rethinking of peer review. In particular, if you think about it, um, if you have, um, you know, like a, a work from hundreds of authors in a big consortia, how can you justify two experts judging that work um, in, in return? So peer review has always been a compromise um, and between sort of the principles of it and the pragmatism, um, the practical implications, and it has been heavily debated for decades now, but it remains broadly slow and exposed to bias. So although the idea behind peer review remains to some degree unchanged um, over time, inevitably peer review has to adapt to the now rapidly accelerating volume and, and the sheer scale of science. So the Frontiers peer review system aims to accomplish four main cornerstones to ensure high quality but also speed. Um, when Frontiers was designed, its principles and the platform Peer review was really right at the heart of the, the idea behind Frontiers. That's, that's why um, Camilla and Henry Markham really set it up. Um, and it was, it was really, we still believe it is the foundation of the academic publishing process, but it required a, a fundamental reset. The guiding principle of the Frontiers peer review are that the process needs to be above all transparent um, and constructive. Um, and the review also needs to be high quality, rigorous, in-depth, uh, efficient, and allow for very quick interactions between the people involved. So our review process is not only about the collaborative part, which I'm going to highlight a little bit now, but, but it's, also, it's a comprehensive approach um, that starts with that the reviewers are part of our editorial boards, that they get detailed questionnaires um, that they have to complete, that they're acknowledged as reviewers on the papers, um, and also to allow for options such as uh, post-publication comments. So it's a whole package that comes with it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same, and I'm going to try and get out of here and see if I can show you what it looks like. Oh. Uh, Wow, that's weird. Okay, you are lucky, I don't know. <laughs> this is obviously not going to work. It's very strange. Oh, that's quite a new computer. That won't go there? It's in the corner. Is it one of these? That's the other chrome one. That's the other chrome one? Yeah. Oh. Do you want to just bring them up? Yeah, that's the problem. That this is not you can't get to them. Mm. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. The mouse is frozen as well. I've never seen anything like that. I'll just create a new one. Do you know what they're doing? Uh, there's quite a few. Yeah, I just can't get to it. I can't get to it. Oh, okay. Do you want to swap that? Oh. Yeah, I'm about to try that. Okay, all right, let's go. Okay, and why is preparation? I have actually got screenshots, but it wouldn't be as nice as it was on the on the web. Okay. Right. So this is the um, review platform. Um, so what happens? So I'm actually logged in as the specialty chief editor now, just for um, I can't get the mouse out of because it's the it's the easiest one. So um, Basically, the, all the interaction, all the review happens within this platform, and um, they have a tab called Manage Reviewers for this particular manuscript. 
and the platform actually provides suggestions for reviewers from the review editorial board um, based on algorithms um, related to the keywords of the manuscript and the expertise of the reviewers. So it, um, it already suggests some of the reviewers for the editor to, uh, to consider and also whether they are status is free. Um, and the important thing is also that each person has a profile um, that they can complete as, um, with details about their expertise, their background and their publications. And that again gives uh, the editors more information to choose the right reviewers for a manuscript. And then the um, reviewers, when they accept to review a manuscript, they will receive a questionnaire that's quite detailed. And I've just taken a screenshot. So it, it involves a lot of different questions, and they would uh, fill out this questionnaire. And when the um, associate editor receives um, the, the questionnaires back, then the editor would evaluate the questionnaires and then open up the interactive review forum. And this is when the reviewer reports become available to the authors. So, um, the, and so they, they basically appear here in these tabs um, and then the authors can access these tabs and see the reviewer reports and the reviewers can also see each other's reports, which is this integral part also about this transparency that everyone can see what's going on and everyone can follow the discussions that are going on about the manuscript. And when the paper is published, then um, we have the reviewers that are, um, and the editor that are acknowledged on the paper. Um, and I can show you. So it's basically details about the manuscript and then it's edited by and reviewed by. This is the information <coughs> that's given. And these um, names are also linked to profiles. So you can, again, um, check people who have been involved in the process um, and their expertise. And it also there's the um, comments option as well that allows for um, anyone to comment. We don't allow anonymous posting, um, so there's usually a, a discussion going on, um, on on this forum, but it's not anonymous. And the other thing that we provide is detailed article level metrics, which are actually were really a, an integral part of the Frontiers uh, platform since uh, its beginning in 2008, where we provide um, data on how the article is used within the community. So now I'm going to jump back to actually where I was in my presentation. So it's a shame. I, I, I do have it on the laptop if you want to see it in real life. So I can go, I can go back. Um, and so the we, have, we haven't actually had many requests to make the reviewer reports available, um, with actually one exception, so our kids' journal. Um, so Frontiers for Young Minds is our kids' journal. Um, introducing kids to science is also an important part of our vision to educate the next generation of scientists and to foster critical thinking um, and to give them the experience of peer review and working um, with mentors. Um, and on my mouse. Um, and... Sorry. And it's um, and it's really something that we want uh, you know kids to be actively involved in uh, past like classroom style learning. Um, and the scientists actually write kids versions of the original research articles, um, and the kids review it. And their reports are often so cool and insightful that people really want to see them. So it's it's the first journal we're actually considering making the reviewer reports available. Um, and what is the feedback we have received so far on our um, review platform? Um, it's quite good, actually. Um, despite a two-step review process, so this independent part of um, uh, completing the, the questionnaires and then the interactive part of where the discussion happens with the authors, um, which is an iterative discussion thread, really, the process is quite fast, and authors write it very highly. Um, and we're also proud to have been recognized by the Alps um, Award a few months ago for our platform as well. Um, so, and on this note, I'd like to finish um, here and thank you for your attention. And sorry about the... <laughs>